Hello and welcome to Plumbing Solutions Educational Series. In this episode, we're going to be talking about how to identify your PEX fittings. Uh, PEX, P-E-X, stands for polyethylene, and that is pretty much the tubing that we use for our potable water in all of our new residential construction uh, homes. Uh, it's pretty much replaced all the old CPVC and any galvanized or copper or anything like that because of cost, because of its durability, and its resistance to corrosion, and a whole lot of other advantages that it has. And there's no glue, and you're not waiting for glue to dry. They're press fittings or crimp fittings, uh, and they've even got some push-on fittings out there. Uh, now, to get started, um, PEX comes in three different colors. It comes in red, uh, white, and blue. Uh, there's no difference in the pipe based off of color. This is just a color to help you identify that's my hot water, that's my cold water, and then they give you white for your stub house. Now, us being a new construction residential company, um, we don't use the blue anymore. Uh, we couldn't figure out why there was a need to have uh, the blue. It's just a third piece of pipe laying out there in the yard that we have to stock and keep track of. So we decided to do away with the blue, do all our blue cold waters in the white, and then of course we had the white for where we poke out of the wall, like behind a toilet or whatever. And then of course we kept the red for our hot water. Um, now all plumbing pipe has on the side of it what they call a birthmark. Uh, and this is going to tell you a lot of different information about that particular pipe, from uh, the size to uh, what standards it meets to what kind of pressures it can handle, what kind of temperatures it can handle, and it's going to have where it was born, uh, the day it was born, and even the time that it was born. Uh, and I want to show you that birthmark on here to help you understand uh, how to identify your pipe and how to, how to read this. So I'm going to zoom in close and uh, we're going to go over this on our three quarter and our half inch real quick. Alright, let's go through this birthmark real quick. There's going to be a lot of information on here that might not really matter to, to you or to us because uh, there's a lot of certification codes, a lot of uh, ratings and stuff that it's met uh, a, a lot different than like say your your drain line stuff because they're not really too particular about what kind of pipe your waste is traveling in but this is drinking water so there's a lot of certifications and stuff it has to pass so let's start uh, with the beginning here now I did cut a piece off here and the very first part of your birthmark is going to be your brand name uh, there's a lot of manufacturers out there that make polyethylene or PEX tubing uh, and of course they're going to have their brand name in big bold letters uh, just to tell you you know who made it <clears throat> uh, but the important number is this one here this tells you the size that's three quarter three quarters of an inch that's the outside diameter of this pipe the next little thing here it says is CTS uh, there's pretty much two standards out there when it comes to tubing uh, there's CTS, which is copper tube size, and then there's IPS, which is iron pipe size. Uh, copper tube size you see a lot on your water lines, uh, where iron pipe size is more of your DWV or your PVC, your, some of your bigger stuff is at that standard. It's a standard on the outside. If, like if you ever use push fittings, a, a push fitting would work on PEX, copper, um, or CPVC because they're all that standard copper tube size and it does say OD which is outside diameter so three quarter copper tube size outside diameter um, the next set of numbers that's important to us uh, this is your your rating this is where they don't recommend you going over this because the pipe could fail but this is its tested rating uh, it says 200 psi which is pounds per square inch which is pressure at 73 degrees Fahrenheit 73 degrees Fahrenheit is kind of an average temperature for your pipe in your wall on, on your cold water. Now coming out of the ground you're generally looking at about 60 to 65 degree temperatures uh, for, for your ground water or your city water coming underneath the ground into your house. But 73 degrees is a good 
inside the house temperature for a pipe. So 200 PSI at 73 degrees, which would be your cold water. The next one is, um, it's rated at 100 PSI at 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, now that's, uh, 180 degrees is pretty hot. Uh, about the hottest we get is 140 uh, at, at the maximum. And uh, we're normally right around 75 to 80 PSI. So we're well within those two tolerances. But that's just something to remember if anybody ever asks you, you know, well, how much pressure can it handle? Well, it can handle 200 PSI at 73 degrees. It can handle 100 PSI at 180 degrees because this polyethylene, as it gets hot, it gets real flexible and it can swell and stuff. Uh, this stuff is really good about just swelling and not bursting. Uh, had a lot of this stuff freeze, but I've never had any of a crack due to freezing because of uh, its flexibility. Uh, the next sets of numbers we're kind of going into our um, our code standard stuff. Uh, it's certifications, things it's passed, things it holds, um, which would be well. You got your UPC code, and then you hit uh, this ASTM. That stands for American Society for Testing Materials. Uh, and then after that, that's going to be the code ratings and stuff it received from that um, society. Uh, now moving along, a lot of these numbers, like I said, are just code ratings and things like that. Um, there's your United Purchase Code stamp. Uh, keep moving here. Keep moving. Uh, here it says it's classified UL Fire Resistant Directory, and then it's going to have its directory number uh, related to that fire resistance. Uh, like I said, a lot of these numbers are just its uh, the criteria it meets, and then you see it's potable water tubing, so it's good for drinking water. And then we get to our actual birthmark part right here, um, and this one was 61319 at 1658. Now that's your 24-hour time, that's like your military time, um, and then you see it's made in Canada and for some reason they always put how long their run when they made their their length of pipe it was originally 180 feet doesn't really mean much but it's manufactured stuff they want to keep track of all that and if they had any pipe come off the machine that was bad on that date they can go pull that pipe or if they have something fail because of them they would know that date range and that time and for warranty or whatever. All right, well that's your three quarter. Now your half inch is gonna be pretty much the same, except for right here at the beginning, it's gonna say half inch. So half inch, copper, copper tube size on the OD, that's that standard on the side. Now half inch, its pressure ratings are exactly the same. It's that 200 PSI at 73 degrees and that 100 PSI, um, at 180 degrees Fahrenheit and then of course we'll go through those numbers and those codes and stuff again uh, if you wanted to you could look those up um, but uh, it, it doesn't really matter to us day to day uh, and then classified fire resistant directory and then we're gonna go on down potable water tubing it is potable water tubing and then we have a date here of 72319 and this piece of pipe was also made in Canada and they they ran uh, 215 feet on this particular length and it's recyclable all right well that kind of gives you an idea of what you're looking at when you're looking at a birthmark um, like I said a lot of these numbers here are that American Society for testing materials um, you could look those up if you wanted to but it it, it, it doesn't really matter uh, to us in the plumbing world but, all right, well, let's jump on into fittings. Fittings are going to be kind of small, so we're going to keep them down here on the table. All right, let's talk about our PEX fittings for our water lines here. First thing you're going to have to have is some crimp rings. Uh, crimp rings come in a couple different sizes, but what we have and what we keep out here in the shops, pretty much just two of them. Uh, we've got your half inch, which is your smaller one, and we've got three quarter, which is your bigger one. And this will, of course, go over your pecs. Your fitting will go in there, and you'll use your crimper to uh, 
crimp that down to make that fitting. But that's it, your crimp rings, you gotta have crimp rings, can't do pecs without your crimp rings. And like I said, these are copper crimp rings. So, half inch and three quarter. All right, the next fitting, uh, this is probably the simplest one we've got out there because it's only got one connection on it. These are your caps, and we have caps in both half inch and three quarter. Here again, we don't really use anything over half inch and three quarter, although every now and again, we will use some inch, and then if we do a pool house or something like that, we'll have a lot bigger pipe too, but that'll all be special stuff. Uh, but half inch and three quarter, this is for if you wanted to cap off a line or stub, stub out a pipe and then later you'd come cut it and put your valve on the end of it or whatever. We don't like leaving dead ends, you know, a live dead end like this in the wall. It's just not a good practice to be in. You, you want those fittings going somewhere uh, unless you're doing it like an air chamber and you're building a three quarter air chamber and it just has air in it. Uh, but that's that's the easiest one there. That's your half and three-quarter cap The next one that's probably one of the most common is your 90s or your elbows some people call them L's uh, But you got your half inch and you've got your three-quarter They're three-quarter three-quarter on both sides and half and half on both sides There is a specialty one out there you can get uh, but we don't stock it because we're not going to be using it all the time every day. We might have once a month need, oh, I really need that. But we've got combinations of other fittings that we can make uh, that work without stocking uh, a whole nother fitting. Um, now, something, uh, PEX does not have 45s like DWV or CPVC or your PVC. Uh, has 45s. PEX doesn't need 45s because it's uh, pretty flexible and you can pretty much bend a 45 degree angle out of it. But you do have 90s and 90s make it clean uh, and look good. The next thing you're going to use a lot of is your couplings and we keep those in half inch and three quarter uh, because our our PEX generally comes in uh, 10 foot sticks or 20 foot sticks and of course we can get rolls but uh, typically our rolls we're using under the slab and you're not going to use fittings on a roll uh, and it's a kind of a pain in the butt when you put it through the wall we like the straight sticks of PEX uh, when we're roughing in a house but this is so you can put two of them together there's a half inch coupling and there's a three quarter coupling now we do carry uh, or stock the uh, the special fitting here on this one, this kind of eliminates those other half by three quarter stuff. Um, this is a half by three quarter um, coupling or reducer. A lot of people call this a reducer. Uh, it's just half on one end, three quarter on the, the other, but it's pretty much a, just another coupling. But there's your couplings. Uh, the next one you're going to run into, every now and again you're going to have to make a threaded connection such as on a tankless water heater or uh, say a relief valve for a water heater or a shower valve. Most of your shower valves are going to have that threaded fitting. These are your threaded male fittings. You got a half inch and a three quarter. The reason why they're called male is because the male part goes inside the female part. Yeah, plumbing can be kind of weird sometimes, but uh, half inch by three quarter male threaded fittings. All right, the next one you're gonna see is your T. Uh, now, when all three sides are exactly the same, you can just call it a three-quarter T or a half-inch T. If these sides are different, you have to name it a little bit differently. But here's your three-quarter and here's your half-inch T. So anytime you're running a, like a main trunk line down the house and you wanna spur off and go, go hit something else with your water line, you're gonna use uh, a T to do that. Uh, now we're gonna start getting a little more complicated. Here's another T. Now, whenever you're naming these things, you're gonna set it 
upright like this with one poking off to the side. Uh, typically, your bigger end is going to go down when you're trying to identify these things. So you can start with the bottom. This also goes for DWV too, or your PVC and a lot of other fittings. So it's three quarter, you're going to start at the bottom, three quarter, go to the top, three quarter, and then half. So this is technically a three quarter by three quarter by half inch T. But when you've got a top and bottom that match, you can call this a three quarter by half inch T and lose one of those uh, numbers. Uh, but that's your three quarter by half inch T. Uh, the next one looks a little weird and this one is the kind of the exception to the case. Uh, you're going to set this one like this. The big end doesn't matter. You're not going to be putting the big end down because that would put you like that. You always need a top and bottom and then your side and sometimes you'll have another side over here. So this one is half inch on the bottom, half inch on the top, three quarter on the side. So we can drop one of those since we're going straight through here and call this a half by three quarter T. Now when I was uh, roughing in houses and doing a lot of waterline, I called this a hammerhead T because to me it looked like a hammerhead shark. Uh, but uh, a lot of our subcontractors and other people, they call this a bullhead T or a ram's head T because they said that looks like horns. So. All right, now it's getting a little more difficult. Now here's a funny one, but now this one does have the big end on the bottom. Uh, this is a three quarter on the bottom, half inch, half inch, so three quarter by half by half T. And this one will always be that because we don't have any straight through or side to side matching numbers. So you can't drop any numbers. It has to be three quarter by half inch by half inch T. Uh, and then Here's another one. This one does uh, same same deal here. Big one on the bottom. It's three quarter on the bottom, half inch on the top, three quarter on the side. So three quarter by half by three quarter T, and that's always what this will be. That's how, the way you have to call them out. Don't turn it over. <laughs> yeah. But all right. Well, that's your kind of your basic fittings. Uh, let's move into some brass stuff we've got here. Uh, Here's the companion to your males. Uh, this is your half inch and three quarter threaded female. And I call them the female because the other fitting is gonna go inside of it. Uh, we use the brass fittings when it comes to our females because you can get these in the poly, which is that plastic, uh, but we had too many of them crack because you're screwing something in into it and maybe you get it too tight or it's screwed into a metal fitting or something. Uh, and the plastic ones just couldn't hold up. They'd crack on the side. So we always use the brass in the females because they're stronger. So there's your half inch uh, female threaded and your three quarter threaded female. All right, sticking with our threaded stuff, we got this guy here. Now I would call this a drop eared 90. Uh, some people call it a shower L or a shower elbow, um, but it's a drop eared 90 because it's got these ears on it. Uh, and that's what you use to screw this guy down. Now, it is a 90. It does make the 90 degree turn. Uh, that's PEX ready right there. You can crimp right onto that. Uh, we use these for showers. This is what your shower arm for your shower head is going to attach to sitting in the wall. You're going to have one of these on every shower and every tub shower. Uh, we also use these for things like pot fillers uh, because you can screw a half inch nipple in there uh, anytime you need something like that your uh, drop eared 90 is gonna come in handy uh, now you can crack these too because a lot of time you're putting a brass nipple or a lead free brass shower arm in here and if you screw it down too tight it can crack so uh, just be careful that that crack will take a long time for that leak to show up. Um, but that's your drop ear. Um, next one uh, you're going to run into a lot is your stop. We call this a stop because it stops the water. Um, this is a quarter turn stop. Uh, it's not the old gate valve style where you had to turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it. Uh, it's just a quarter of a turn. It's a ball valve in here. This is lead free brass. It is PEX ready. Uh, you're going to have two of these under every uh, lavatory or sink. Um, a hot one on hot, one on cold. You're going to have one of these under or behind your toilet. 
uh, so you can turn the water off, uh, fix the toilet, turn it back on. Um, so you will see a lot of these. Every house is going to have a whole bunch. And then, uh, of course, your kitchen, uh, you're generally going to have three because one's going to go for your dishwasher. But that is your stop or your shutoff valve. Next thing I got here is what they call a hose bib. Now, I grew up here in the south, and uh, to, to me, this is a spigot. Uh, but there's actually def different definitions for what is a spigot, what's a hose pib, and what a seal cock is. But they're all pretty much the same thing. It's a gate valve. Uh, sometimes you can see uh, like a quarter turn ball valve, uh, but traditionally they're the gate valve. This one does have a vacuum breaker already hooked to it. Uh, most of the time they're not hooked together like this and you have to supply the vacuum breaker along with the hose bib. It is PEX ready. It's half inch on this end, um, but that's your hose bib. Every house gets two of them, uh, at least two of them. Uh, but that's what you're looking for if anybody ever asks for a hose bib or a spigot or a seal cock. All right, every house is going to have at least one of these. Uh, some houses have two of them. This is a resilient seat ball valve. It's got a stainless steel ball valve in there. This is made out of lead-free brass. Uh, these things are designed to last forever. Uh, you just have to go over there and turn them off and on every now and again because they can get stuck. Uh, and uh, I have seen those stainless steel balls. I have seen them rust before, uh, but over a long period of time. Uh, this one's a three-quarter. You can also get this in half inch, but it's a ball valve because that's actually a little ball inside of there. But yeah, every house is going to have one of these for a main shutoff. Sometimes they'll have a half-inch one for uh, the hose bibs. All right, and the last thing you're going to see, this is called a PRV. It's a pressure regulating valve. Some people call them a pressure reducing valve. But what this does is it regulates your pressure by screwing this bolt in or uh, running the bolt back out. You, you screw it in, the pressure goes up. You screw it out, the pressure goes down. Now these are designed to max out at about 80 PSI, but I've noticed if you hit this with about 300 PSI, it doesn't do anything at all. You have to put a couple of them in a series when you're dealing with the really, really high pressures to bring you back down to that 80 or that 75 because it will, 300 PSI will blow this thing open and you're, you're, you're done. <laughs> but these come in three quarter, uh, pretty much all of them are three quarter. Uh, I haven't seen any other sizes, uh, not in new construction. Uh, I do know they come larger and larger and larger for big commercial and industrial stuff like that, but we don't do that kind of work. So that is your PRV in the three quarter. And that's pretty much going to do it for all of our basic fittings. Every now and again you might have something different, but um, this is what we stock and this is what we use every day.